I'm Buck Kieschel. Welcome to the studio of Keith Jacobs Hagen. Really, um, the, the master Nebraska landscape artist. Um, Keith, what's your typical day like in a studio? Well, I walk into the studio after breakfast usually and, and uh, uh, look around and see what happened the day before. And I might sit down and go to work right away or I might go out and into the living room and sit and drink coffee and with uh, Paula. Uh, but normally I like to be at work by 10.30 or 11 and then I'll just work through the day until uh, the uh, and, and, until probably about 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, when it's staying light later, then I can go to the country later in the afternoon. Yeah. What typical artwork do you do in the country? Do you use oils? You use what? Uh, do you use watercolors, pastels? What do we do? Well, I, I I don't paint oils out there much anymore. I paint mostly watercolor studies in small uh, drawing books, and I draw out there. And I also make photographic reference out there. That's great. That's great. Is there a particular way you like your studio set up best? Right now is the way I like my studio set up best, which is you know, with uh, two, two easels facing each other. And so I can, you know, if I take a break from one painting, I can swivel around and look at the other painting uh, and spend some time sort of thinking about that. How, how many pieces do you normally have going at once? Painting well, lines? usually two. And right now, uh, since we're getting ready for the sh for our show, uh, I've got probably three or four different paintings that are in progress right now. Great, great. You know, are, are there things or objects that you keep in your studio that kind of inspire your creativity? <laughs> well, my my all my toys over there on the on that uh, bookshelf, that low bookshelf. Going back to your youth. Going back to my youth, yeah. Lots of stuff there that uh, gives me a real nice sort of uh, charge of the energy when I look at them. Makes me feel good. You hear music in the background. Any particular type that you generally like to listen to while creating? In the morning, I, I want mostly to get classical music. But by uh, afternoon, I've switched to jazz. Nice. Yeah. And mostly contemporary jazz. Yeah, yeah. Now, when um, w w what are we working on right now? What do we have going? Well, this uh, 30 by 30 painting, which is uh, a road I found a couple of years ago. Uh, it's an abandoned road. They took out the, the old road. And it's sort of, uh, you can see I made a little Polaroid of it when I found it. And and was I, it yeah. Was it something you found years ago or recently? Oh yeah, probably five years ago. Nice. Five or six years ago. So I made a little Polaroid and to, and to keep my, my memory bank uh, healthy with it. And, and, um, and then I found the Polaroid recently, probably uh, two months ago. and. Uh, Realized I had kind of abandoned that idea and I wanted to get back to it. So that's what this painting is right now. And what do we have going on the other easel? Yeah. Uh, this is also, this is actually an older painting right here. This painting is probably five or six years old. And I had it turned against the wall and leaned with a bunch of other paintings in front of it. And I had looked at this painting for, I bet, a year. And then uh, I was just kind of going through old paintings and stuff and found this and I was intrigued by it. And I thought I'd go ahead and uh, do a little more work on it, maybe up in the sky. Uh, those things for me are uh, they sort of come in waves. I, you know, I'm not one of, I used to start a painting and finish a painting within about a week or two weeks and then walk away from it. But now uh, since I've been in the studio for this length of time and I'm so comfortable in the studio, I'll, uh, 
I'll start a painting, or, and, and I might uh, get to a point where I, I, I've sort of exhausted ideas, so I'll put it over there against the wall and turn it, face it against the wall, so that I find it by accident, which is really nice. Nice. It's, you know, it, it's a, it can be a real surprise. Now, and, and so what surprised me was that, uh, that moon, that kind of sudden moon. In fact, I think I'm probably going to title it Sudden Moon. Nice. Yeah. What time of the day would that painting be? It's late, real, uh, it, I'm sorry, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's late afternoon, probably early evening, yeah. You know, I know that you're attracted to sort of your your early evening, later day scene painting. Is that intentional, or is that just kind of the Jacob Sagan time? No, it's t you know I'm a romantic about that, and I love that time of day. That from say three o'clock until seven or eight o'clock, depending on how early or how late the sun's going down. You know, I know you're you were a professor for forty plus years. I like that. Um, do you, do you miss being a, do you miss, do you miss teaching or are you glad that you have the time on just focusing on your own craft? You know, it's a real mixed bag for me. I, uh, I, when I, when I stopped teaching almost five years ago, uh, I, I retired and, uh, I was happy to retire uh, and get out of, uh, the kind of pressures that go on is, in, as a faculty member in a, in, a, in a big college like that. Um, but I have continued to uh, talk to grad students if they want to talk to me. And that's uh, a, a kind of a nice connection I can have. Uh, I always enjoyed teaching. I learned a lot from my students. Uh, uh, and I hope that uh, that was reciprocal, that they learned a lot from me. But it's just surprising how ahead of things students can be at times, and uh, keeps me. It kept me honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you weren't an artist, yeah. What would what, what would you be? Oh, I'd be flying airplanes. Any advice you have to give to a young artist? Well. I would say just stay energetic and and don't get down. I mean, when you're young and, and uh, maybe having uh, problems in terms of people being interested in the work, I just say just keep working. Eventually somebody will come along who will find it interesting and, and they may be in a position to, uh, you know, to help you in terms of uh, the, the commercial side of it. In other words, having a dealer and... Uh, finding uh, people who are willing to show the work, and I, if, if you can, I think I think it can be very exciting to show your work in other places other than where you live. And so I was fortunate in that, and that I had a, I had a New York dealer for gosh I don't know 15, 20 years. Uh, I don't have one anymore. And I had I had a good art dealer in Chicago who eventually gave up the game in Chicago. And uh, there was a period of time when I had dealers everywhere, and, and phew, I've cut way back on that now. And uh, it's really made me, uh, it's really given me even more time to just make paintings and sort of let them evolve uh, slowly instead of sort of rushing things and feeling the pressure and things. So, Pretty cool. Yeah. Keith, thanks for your time, man. Sure. Um, I uh, always, always enjoy wa watching you. I mean, you know, I've known I I've known you since I've probably been seven or eight years old. Yeah. So I mean, it's like uh, you were sort of my my young vision of you know. If someone said artist, what's an artist? I had you know Keith Jacobs hanging in my head. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, you bet. I appreciate the time.